Hello there, and welcome to Trailhead Church. We're happy to have you with us today, and we're glad that you're joining one another as we worship today. Why don't we uh, begin with a great song of uh, thanksgiving? come before you with a, just a thankful heart, God. We come before you and we are just honored to be here with you. Great is thy faithfulness, O God, my Father. There is no shadow.
joy is found communion with you beholding your beauty knowing your truth living a life that pleases your heart responding with praise it all that you
Running after, it's running after 
And all my life you have been faithful. And all my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, I will sing of the goodness. Hey guys, if you've been with us over the last few weeks here at Trailhead, you probably know that we've been walking through a series that we're calling Jesus Follower. And in this series, what we're doing is as we start a year together, as we walk through the beginning of the new year together, we're, we're really asking the question, how can we keep God as the top priority in everything that we're doing in life. And if you've ever paid attention to the life of Jesus, you know this is exactly what he did in an incredible way, almost a supernatural way. Jesus was able to keep the Father as the top priority in everything that was going on in his life and in his world. If you're anything like me, you know how much we struggle in this. I mean, you probably have had these times like I have where you're praying Maybe you're driving down the road, you're praying, you're excited, you're connecting with God. He's top priority. And all of a sudden, uh, squirrel, right? And, and your attention is shifted and you start thinking about squirrels and oh, he's got a nice fluffy tail. And I like squirrels. I just don't want them running across the road. And 15 minutes later, it's like, oh, God, I was talking to you. What happened? You know, uh, and somehow we have this, uh, it seems like a human condition that is uh, ADD in some regard, where uh, for, for one minute we can focus on God and have him as our top priority. For the next minute, it's like something totally different, totally unrelated, comes into our picture and takes our focus off that. And, and so again, we're just kind of walking through this series ask, asking the question, how did Jesus do this? How did he walk with God daily with the Father as the top priority in everything that he was doing? And so a few weeks ago, as we were talking about this, we basically said that if God is going to be our top priority, we have to prioritize hearing his voice. We have to be able to listen to him, whether that's through reading scripture or through prayer or, or through circumstances or through any number of those kinds of things. We have to be able to keep the voice of God as the priority in what we're listening to 
Even though we're hearing messages from all different sources, even though things are running around in our head, we have to be able to keep the voice of God as one of our top priorities. And after that, we said that, you know, it's just normal for us to make decisions every day. In fact, we make tons of them. The study has come out that says we make, as, as average adults, we make about 35,000 decisions every single day. And so, again, the question was, well, how do we keep God at the forefront of those decisions, whether they're conscious decisions or unconscious or subconscious decisions. How do we make sure that God is staying at the forefront of that? Last weekend, uh, we kind of talked about obedience. And as we're talking about that, the question was, how do we keep God as the top priority when he is telling us to do things that we don't necessarily want to do? How do we keep him as first and foremost when he is telling us you need to get this out of your life and we really like this? <laughs> How do we keep him there when he's saying, I, I really want you to be disciplined in the way that you are spending time with me and, and we're thinking, I, I just can't get out of bed in the morning. And, and so we started talking through those kinds of things. And, and this week, what we're doing today, we're talking about the fact that every one of us have certain things in our lives that are necessities. And, and these necessities tend to consume our thoughts, consume our minds, and tend to pull us in a different direction from God as our priority. So uh, how do we keep God as our top priority as we wrestle with the needs, the necessities, the important things of life that face every single one of us? Uh, let me ask you a question. If you had to make a list and say, these are my necessities in life. These are the things that I cannot live without. What's going to be on your list? And by the way, I'm not talking about, you know, fake world uh, reality show where you're going out to live in the woods and you, you say, okay, I can live with these two sticks over my head as my shelter and I'll pick these berries. Uh, no, no. In real life, in everyday world, in your world, if you're not going to drastically change the way that your life is, what are the necessities? What do you have to have? I think every one of us would say, well, clearly, they're the, the big three, right? We have to have food, we have to have water, we have to have shelter. Um, every one of us have those as necessities, and they, they pull our attention uh, to, to different things at different times. Um, and if you acknowledge that I have to have these things, you probably also acknowledge, well, I've got to have some sort of financial income, <laughs> whether that's from a regular job, whether that's from a retirement fund, whether that's from Social Security, whether that's from my parents giving me money, whatever it is, I have to have some sort of income in order to survive, in order to live. Um, that probably means you've got to have a job, right? <laughs> how, do you, how do you prioritize God when you have to step into things like a job on a daily basis? How do you keep God as the top priority when all of these other things are competing with him that are necessities? Maybe on your list, you keep going and you say, you know what, honestly, it, just, just being totally honest here, if I'm going to continue to live this life in this way, I have to have some sort of retirement fund. There's no way for me to do this otherwise. I cannot see my kids asking me to move in with them. I have to have this. This is a necessity. It may be that you say, because of my health, I cannot do life unless I have some sort of health care, some sort of uh, insurance plan that's taking care of my health care needs. It could be any number of things. You may say, if I don't have a reliable vehicle, I'm not going to make it because my, my livelihood depends on me being able to travel and get to different places, right? I, I don't know what all your list would include, but, but every one of us have a list where we would say, yeah, these are things that we have to have in order to function properly, in order to live, in order to just do life the way that we do life here in the United States. And, and I think every one of us would acknowledge those are the things that tend to take our time, take our attention, take our focus, and dominate the way that we are thinking. 
So we, we think about those things most of the time, and every once in a while, uh, yeah, I'll spend some time worshiping, or every once in a while, I'll pull aside and read from Scripture. But in the midst of this kind of lifestyle, how do we keep God as the top priority? In order to answer that question, I want us to look at something that Jesus said in the book of Matthew. Matthew chapter 6 is where we're going to hang out for a few minutes today. And as we're looking here, um, this is the middle of what's known as the Sermon on the Mount. And just to kind of set the scene for you, um, I just want to acknowledge that, you know, as Jesus teaches us how to do this, He's walking through the same things that we walk through. We tend to take Jesus and kind of put him up on this superior pedestal and say, well, yeah, he dealt with the stuff we dealt with, but he's God. And so he, you know, we kind of give him a pass. Uh, he could do whatever he wants, you know. But Jesus had necessities, just like we have necessities. Uh, he, he had to eat. He had to have shelter. He had to have money to some regard. He even had one guy of the disciples that was in charge of the money, you know. He, he had to have all of the same type things that we have to have. He, he couldn't do life apart from them. You may say, well, you know, I have to have a job. Jesus could break the fish and the bread and eat for like 57 weeks in a row with ever, without ever having to get anything else. But that's not reality. That's not what God the Father had him doing. That's not the way he had him do life. He lived exactly the way that we live. And so it's in that context that he's speaking into this. And he gathers his disciples together. Some other people start crowding around. Apparently, he's standing on a hill, and so he starts to speak in a way where he's saying, this is how you do life in the midst of everyday normal stuff. That's where we jump in in Matthew chapter 6 in the Sermon on the Mount with Jesus kind of explaining, this is how you keep this balance the right way. So if you want to jump there with me, Matthew chapter 6, we'll be starting in verse 25. And that verse simply says this. It says, that is why I tell you, Jesus speaking, that is why I tell you not to worry about everyday life. And you can imagine that's where the disciples all break into roarous laughter and say, yeah, good one, Jesus. We, we see, you may even feel the same way. Like, don't worry about everyday life. Okay, Jesus, if I'm not gonna worry about it, who is? Because if I don't worry about this, this is not going to get done. And Jesus says, no, seriously, you don't have to worry about everyday life. That doesn't mean you don't ever think about some of these things, these necessities in your world. But it does mean that you aren't consumed by them, that, that you aren't being driven by those things that we have listed as our necessities. He says, honestly, don't worry about your everyday life. He goes on and starts to explain a little further what that means in verse 25. He says, uh, don't worry about everyday life, whether you have enough food and drink or enough clothes to wear. <laughs> this is stuff that, yeah, this is applicable to, to us, um, but honestly, we don't have to worry about this stuff most of the time, right? Right? We don't have to worry about where is my next meal going to come from because we have refrigerators, we have grocery stores, we have restaurants, uh, we have all of these options in front of us. So this is not something that we sit and consume a lot of time with. We may consume a lot of time thinking about, okay, what am I going to eat? But we don't have to worry so much about, am I going to eat? And, and in the first century in Israel, think about what would have dominated their thinking, what was a first and foremost necessity for them. What are we going to eat next? There is no refrigerator, right? There is no grocery store. Uh, there, there is no McDonald's down the road, which is probably a really good thing. Uh, but they don't have any of these things to access food quickly and easily. They have some stuff that they can store away, but some stuff doesn't last for long. And so literally every day, you're thinking multiple times a day, 
what do I have? Am I going to be able to eat? Is this going to be the 27th day in a row where I have rice and beans and rice and beans and rice and beans? <laughs> you know, and, and so every day they would have continually been thinking about how am I going to eat next? It, it was a normal part of their life. It was a necessity for them to live. And he says, don't worry about that. Don't worry about where you're going to get food. Don't worry about what that food will be. And then he says, don't worry about what you will drink. And again, this is almost so far removed from our culture that we can't imagine, right? But they don't have running water in their homes. They, they don't have the, the convenience store down the road to go grab a slushie or a Coke or a Gatorade or whatever they want to drink in the moment. Uh, no, they've probably got a river or, or some body of water uh, in in walking distance of their home, but they have to go get it. They have to bring it back. They might even have to boil the water. You know, they have this whole process that they have to go through just to have a drink <laughs> every day. And so this is one of those things that it's always at the front of their minds. Uh, where am I going to get food? Where am I going to get water? And Jesus goes on and says, don't even worry about your clothes. Okay, so maybe we can relate a, a little more here um, because we worry about clothes, <laughs> right? We tend to worry about what's the weather going to be? What am I going to wear? Okay, it's going to be mid-40s and sunny, so I, I don't have to dress too warm, but, you know, maybe some layers. I, I don't know. That's what we worry about when we think about clothes because we've got this whole selection standing in front of us in our walk-in closets that we're going to pick from. But these guys worried about clothes in a totally different way. It wasn't a fashion kind of worry. It was a necessity <laughs> type of worry. It was literally, if my shorts or whatever you would call them get torn, well, what am I going to wear for the next week, you know, until these get fixed because I've only got one set of clothes. It was literally, if someone takes my cloak, what am I going to do for a cloak? And Jesus says, just don't worry about it. <laughs> don't stress over it. And this just almost sounds ridiculous when you think about it. He, he's saying these are absolute necessities, and he acknowledges that. These are things you have to have, have to engage with on a daily basis. But he says, yeah, don't, don't get consumed by it, because this is not what life is all about. In fact, what I think he's saying here is, I think he's saying you can engage with these things and you can even enjoy them, but don't organize your life around these items. Don't organize your world and set your priorities with money and food and clothing and water as the top priority. He says those aren't the big rocks. And you may say, yeah, those are the big rocks. <laughs> That's what I get up every morning for. That's why I go to work to make sure that my kids are going to have those things, that I am going to have those things. And Jesus says, no, 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 that's not the priority. And he gives us another way to think about priorities. So before we look at what he says next, I just want to acknowledge we all have priorities, right? Whether, whether we've written them down, whether we've listed them out or not, every one of us have things that we say, these are priorities in my world. Maybe you get yours from that list of necessities. Jesus says that you're looking in the wrong place. <laughs> That's not where we start getting our priorities. And so he goes on and tells them the way that he does this. He goes on and tells them the way that this works in his world. And he says this, if we jump down a few verses to verse 31, he kind of repeats what he's saying here. He says this, he says, so don't worry about these things, saying, what will we eat? What will we drink? What will we wear? In verse 32, he says, these things dominate the thoughts of unbelievers. In other words, this is normal stuff for people to think about. This is normal stuff for people to engage with. He says, this dominates the thoughts of most people, of unbelievers. But your heavenly Father already knows all your needs. And so the question becomes, do we really believe that? 
do we really trust that God knows what we need and he will provide it for us? Because it's just so easy for us to say, if I don't do this, then who's going to do it? If I don't worry about this, then who's going to take care of it? It's not going to take care of itself. That's often very true, right? But Jesus says, you can engage with those things, but do not organize your life around them. Do not let this drive the way that you live. Instead, he points out what he does. In verse 33, he gives us the, the key to all of this. And it's probably a verse that you've heard before, but he says, instead of that, here's what you do. Seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously, and he will give you everything you need. In, in the Bible, if you search for the word priority, if you go to some Bible software where you can plug in the word priority and search for it in Scripture, it almost doesn't matter what version of Scripture you look at, the word priority doesn't exist. <laughs> it's not in the Bible. That's one of those weird uh, words that just isn't in there. And so the way that the Old Testament writers, as well as the New Testament writers, talk about making something priority is they say, seek it. If you go to the book of Proverbs, for example, all through the beginning of Proverbs, he tells us to seek wisdom, search after wisdom. And what he's saying is he's saying this needs to be a priority in the way that you live. And so as we get to this place, Jesus doesn't say the word priority, but what he says is he says, seek God. And he gives a, a, a way for us to do that, a position that that should be in. He says, seek God first the kingdom of God, the things of God. Seek that above everything else. Prioritize the things of God, the relationship with God above every other thing that you would say is a necessity in your life and in your world. And he brings us to this point where he's just making it so clear. He's saying you're either going to love God and prioritize him over everything else. You're either going to love God and use money or use stuff, or you're going to love stuff and use God. It can't be both ways. You can't have two number one priorities, right? Right. And so again, he says, you're either going to love God and use money or use stuff, or you are going to love stuff and use God. There are no other ways to do this. And so Jesus says, while it may feel like you need to be paying attention to your necessities that are in front of you, while it may feel like that is the dominant thing in your world that you should be paying attention to, what in reality, as a believer, you should be doing is saying, I know God is going to take care of the things that I can't take care of. <laughs> I know God is going to take care of the things that I fail in or that I don't do as well as I should. I need to love God first and foremost above everything else. I need to seek the kingdom before I seek anything else in my own life and in my own world. So the question becomes, how do we do that? <laughs> how can we practically live this out? And I just want to give you a really simple statement that I hope will help you process this and think through it and start to do this in a new way. And that statement is this, that if we want God to be the top priority, even in the midst of us having our attention drawn away by all of these other necessities, if we want God to be the top priority, here's what we need to do. You need to give God your, the first of your day and the first of your stuff. Two simple ways that you can step into this right now, today. Give God the first of your day and the first of your stuff. And let me just tell you what I mean by that. As you think about giving God the first of your day, it, it probably is pretty self-explanatory, right? But I'm not talking about necessarily jumping out of bed and as soon as your feet hit the floor, you're running to your Bible and you're spending time on your knees in prayer. Maybe that's the way that you'll end up doing it. I don't know. Um, I 
tend to know people though, and many people need their coffee or they need their shower or they need something to get them going first. And so as we talk about giving God the first part of your day, it doesn't necessarily mean the very first seconds of your day, but it does mean right at the beginning of your day that you prioritize the things of God. And here's what happens. When you say yes to God at the beginning of the day, it's so much easier to say no to the distractions and the sinful temptations that come throughout the rest of your day. It, it sets the stage for everything else that's going to come, right? When you say yes to God at the beginning of the day, it becomes so much easier to say yes to the God interruptions in your world that you would normally try to push aside, that you would normally say, I don't have time for this. If you have started your day by seeking the things of God, when that God interruption comes later in the day, it's so much easier to say, yeah, this is what I need to do. I need to spend time handling these things in the way that God wants. Because I know as I listen to him, as I follow him, as I prioritize him, he's going to take care of everything else. Now, please hear me in the right way. I'm not saying God just gives us a pass and says, you don't have to work, you don't have to do any of these other things, I will take care of it all. No, that's, that's not the case at all. <laughs> but what he does say is he says, as you are prioritizing me, and as you are doing what I've asked you to do, I will take care of all of your other needs. I will meet all of these other necessities. And so that's the first part of your day. But what about the first part of your stuff? <laughs> this is where it gets really touchy, right? This is where we say, uh, hit pause on the video. I'm not sure I want to talk about this right now. Uh, but it's, it's so incredibly true. If we love God and use stuff, it changes the way that we handle stuff. And when we start to give God the first of our stuff, before we pay the bills, before we go buy Starbucks, before we do anything else, you know what we're doing? We're saying, God, I love you above everything else in life, and I thank you for allowing me to use this stuff. <laughs> In those moments, in those times, we, we tend to kind of want to panic and say, well, if I give God first, then what about all this other stuff, right? That's where God starts to clarify all the other stuff. And, and maybe he says to you, okay, you think this is a need, but this is not a need. You think $5 of coffee every day is an absolute need, but you probably can do without that, <laughs> or you can make it at home, one or the other, right? And God starts to clarify. Yeah, you, you give me the first of your stuff. I will clarify the rest of life so that you do this in a way where all of your needs are met by me every day. It's this incredible place that we come to where we say, God, I know I'm going to be distracted. God, I know all of these other things are going to be pulling at my attention, trying to pull me away from you. But God, I want you to be the top priority in my life. Here's the thing, and this is where we will wrap it all up, but here's the thing. It's not easy. You know this. I know this. And part of the reason this is not easy to do is because God does not force this on us. This is a decision that we have to make where we say, yes, I'm going to make God the top priority in my day and in my stuff and in every other aspect of my world. There's a verse in the book of Revelation that just helps us uh, think through this, helps us to understand this better. In Revelation, Jesus is actually writing to, sending a message to, a letter to a church. And as he writes to this church, he depicts himself standing outside the door of the church. Now, these are believers. These are people who would say they are Jesus followers, right? And Jesus says this. You probably could quote it with me. He says, behold, I stand at the door and knock, right? It doesn't say, behold, I stand at the door and kick it in, and I'm going to get in whether you want me to or not. No, he says, this is the way that I work. 
I'm inviting you into a new way of life. I'm not going to force you to come with me. I'm not going to force this on you. I will stand and knock and I will hope that you will open the door and invite me in to eat with you and you with me. (laughs) But I'm not going to force this on you. It's a decision that every single one of us has to make every single day. Jesus says, just don't worry about this everyday stuff. Don't be consumed with, don't organize your life around these everyday necessities because God knows you need those. You just worry about organizing your life around God himself and his kingdom. And all of this other stuff will work itself out. (laughs) If we truly want to be Jesus followers, and not just Jesus admirers. It means that we are going to have to start thinking in a new way as we prioritize him even in the necessities of life. Uh, Let's go to God and ask him to help us with this. Father, we are so grateful for your patience with us. We are so thankful that, that you're a God who is just, incredibly, incredibly merciful and gracious and loving. We thank you that you're a God who invites us to do life with you. And Father, we just admit, as much as we want this, as much as we want you to be priority in our world, it's so easy to get distracted and to get pulled away from this in other directions. I pray that for all of us that are engaged in this church this week, for all of us that are part of Trailhead, that you would give us a special ability, a special draw to yourself, that, that we would just desire to be with you, that we would desire to do life the way that Jesus has shown us to do life. Help us to place you not just for five minutes, but for a day or even a week, Father. Help us to place you as the priority in everything that we are doing. We love you and we worship you through this. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you guys again for being a part of Trailhead. Um, I hope that you will join us again next weekend as we will continue this series uh, talking about how Jesus keeps God the Father as the top priority in his world and how we can do the same. Have a great day. I'll see you again soon.